Welcome everybody, Phil Beckwith, the professional painter and decorator. Back with a really interesting video on how to paper a ceiling. Da, da, da. Um, qu quite a simple ceiling this is for us because it's only lining paper. But I'll talk you through the process of how you line a ceiling or stroke how you wallpaper a ceiling. So, um, like you can see, my dad's there, he's going to be doing the pasting for me. So I've got helper today. Um, just first things first, we've come into the ceiling. That's all we're doing. We're only actually doing the ceiling. Now we've come in, it's already been stripped for us, but there was a lot of flakiness on the ceiling that was actually PVA. <sighs> Somebody put PVA on the ceiling. What I'll do, I'll insert, uh, insert some pictures of what the ceiling surface was like but you could tell it was PVA that had been put onto the bare plaster surface. It was really peeling badly. Um, you could actually see a sheen across the ceiling where the PVA had actually dried onto the surface and put that bit of a, like a glossy finish to it, which is, I've told you before, if you look at that video there, why not to use PVA as a wall primer? That I'll explain to you. But we've sorted that, what we've done, we've Merca sanded it down with the Merca Laros and then we've coated it all up with Zinza Guards. So that is actually an alkali resisting um, primer sealer for a problematic sealing like that. And I'm gonna say a problematic sealing because it's got um, the PVA over the surface. So that's sorted. We're just waiting for that to dry off. It's half an hour dry. You can get on it within um, one to two hours. So we're just waiting um, to that to dry while we're getting set up. Right, let's talk you through what we're actually going to do and where we're going to start. So um, I'll move around and um, I'll show you. Right, I've moved around now. If you were doing a ceiling, a correct, proper, professional way of doing a ceiling, you'll start from the main light source, which is the window over there. You'd actually offer up your paper. I'm going to tell you how a professional would do it. You would offer up your paper against that, co oh, let's see if we can do it, against that coving edge on one side and then the other and mark the width of the actual paper that you're hanging. You'd strike a line between those two marks, but if the, what happens if the coving's running out? Oh, I can hear you saying that. What happens if the coving's running out? So do you know what you do? Where you mark up the paper width, you actually bring it in, let's, I'll say half an inch. So you bring your paper edge in half an inch, strike a line between the two, and then hang your paper, lining paper, wallpaper, anaglypta, to that edge. And if there's any movement, i.e. if it's a bit of a wavy grounds back leg on that coving edge, it's gonna take it in in that at least half an inch. Does that make sense? I'll explain to you again. You measure out, I'll just get me shears. You measure out the width of the paper. Now the paper I've got is marked there. That is the width of the paper. But if you bring it in half an inch, let's call it 10, 15 mil, and do that there, and then do do the same on that side and then strike a line with a chalk line or get your laser on your fixed laser position and get a line between the two, you would hang your paper. And then if that coving edge or ceiling edge to wall edge is actually running out, you're allowing a tolerance. But today I'm not doing that. I'm still gonna work from the ceiling the best I can, but because it's lining paper, I don't have to worry too much about working from that main source. I'm actually going to work, if I can get you all on the camera, I'm going to hang the paper from the longest length, which is over in that corner. So I'll actually follow that coving edge all the way along, hoping that's straight. I'll make it straight. I will hang the paper to that edge and then follow it across this ceiling to this side. And then I will fill in from that coving edge, paper edge, all the way back make sense and then my next length off that longest length will work all the way back to the back of the room I hope that's um, made it simple to you <laughs> probably not you'll see it when I'm actually doing it but 
One of the reasons is that your paper from the main light source is back in the days of old when paper trimming wasn't very good. If you work from the light source, if any light came across an edge joint that was slightly springing up because the joints weren't very good, um, it would cast a shadow. So anybody who actually works from the furthest side of the room to the main light source, then you can have problems. It's not too bad in this day and age where you actually have proper trimmed wallpaper, but start as you mean to go on, actually working from the main, site, main light source is the correct procedure for paper and a ceiling. Uh, turning it on its head, if you're actually papering a ceiling and lining it first, you could actually start the opposite side of the room and work back towards the main light, or even go cross-lining it so you don't get any butt joints corresponding with the actual finished paper. But we're not doing that, we're only lining today. So um, let's get some paper cut, let's get some paper pasted, I'll get a length on, then you'll see what I mean. Right, here we are. Now, because my dad's doing the pasting for me, I'm having to do feet and inches. Oh, I know, feet and inches. All you young apprentices, you're gonna say, what do you mean feet and inches? Oh, it's not meters, all right. I've actually measured from that corner there all the way across that ceiling. I'm allowing two inches either side and I've got a 15 foot nine length of wallpaper to hang. Now from this corner here going all the way to the other side a 12 foot length will be ample. So what we're going to do is going to get this long length on first because that's the longest for the room width size then I'm gonna drop on the lengths that go back towards the window. Now the last one against the window, I've got a piece about that wide. What's that? I don't know. Seven, eight inches, which I prefer to have there against the window, just across there. It's easy enough to get on than me actually trying to put in a piece in that, uh, in that section there if that makes sense, because if it had gone from the window, I'd have probably stopped short about there. I had to fill in a piece. I wouldn't have wanted to put a 15 foot length in with having to do loads of cuts. So you're actually cutting and splicing and patching. Didn't want to do that. So we're putting the longest length on first. A bit like doing a staircase drop. The longest, the longest length on a staircase is the one that you hang first. So I'm doing exactly the same on this ceiling. But as I said earlier, you could go anyway on this because it's just being lined. So uh, let's crack on. Here we are, we've got the pasting machine going. Now if you want to know about how to paste wallpaper properly, there's a video there, but you're going to actually see the master at work. Now what you do with papering and pasting, you make sure that first length, you can see what I'm touching there, You've probably got three or four different, well, you've got three or four lengths of paper on your board, but as you're pasting the top one, you push that forward so it overhangs the paste table by a fraction, and the paper that are underneath, you pull it back towards you, so you don't get any paste. One, on the table as you're pasting, because you're pasting away from the edge, you're not dragging back. That stops you getting any paste on the table, but also it stops you getting paste on the underlying papers because there's nothing worse than getting paste on underlying papers and it over soaks. I've seen a lot of people that will have a, paste, a piece of paper underneath and they're pasting onto that. Ugh, nobody's shown you how to do that at college, have they? Of course they've not. So this is what my dad's doing at the minute. He's now doing the bottom section and now he's going to be pasting that way so no paste goes, gets on actual um, the paper under, underneath. And now he's doing concertina folds because we're doing a ceiling. Can you see what he's doing? Yeah, we'll come back to that. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Concertina folds. So we're back on the concertina folds. We've got 15 foot nine to concertina up. And this is how you do it. You overlap, i.e. concertina it. <laughs> it's nothing, it's not an end to end pasting and folding, it's actually a concertina fold. Then when I come to actually do the ceiling, I get myself a, a crutch to hold it in place and I work off that, but you'll see me doing that when I do the ceiling. But again, 
we're pasting with the paper just beyond the paste table, only a fraction. You paste away from yourself, you're doing the top half, and then when you're doing the bottom half, you pull that down, your underlying papers go up, and you do exactly the same, the opposite way around. There you go. So these are the underlying papers there, and we've pulled it back, and we're working the lower half. All makes sense when you know how to do it. Right, I'm back, ready to sign some paper. Now we're using 1,000 lining paper, soaking times eight to 10 minutes. We're using tub paste, so um, you, you can't get any better than tub paste. Right, you'll see me, I'm gonna start in that corner. I've got my crutch, which I've made up out of a tight roll of off-cut lining paper, put some tape around it. That goes underneath to support the concertina fold lining paper. Now, how you do it, you have a little bit of an overlap, which is your off cut. You fold it back on yourself and that allows you to touch it and pick it up as you need. Now, I'm gonna start here and you'll probably see me going across. I have got a batten outside, but for the way this room is, I've got a, a step up, hop up and a pair of steps. And because we've got somebody to help me, I know I'm looking at the camera, help me, is it? is it help or not, um, they'll move the steps along as a step across like a stepping stone because it's quite easy to do that with these hop-ups and a pair of steps. So um, let's get on. A um, few minutes, I'll see you at the end, if I can. Here we go. So just pulling off that overfold because that will be the piece that gets cut off at the end. And I'm hanging directly to the edge of the coving. It's only a short piece. Once it go beyond the coving, the paper will go where it wants to go. Use an ordinary hanging brush. Spatula, just to get it straight into that angle. Leaving it there, and I'll come back to trimming that off. Now we're gonna take these concertina folds as I go along the pair of steps moving across the room on stepping stones, the concertina opens out and gives me that little bit of paper that I need for when I'm actually getting it on the ceiling. I hope that's self-explanatory. All the way to the end there. I've got it down. When you come up to the coving edge, I've used the proper hanging brush, but when I get up to the coving edge, just jam it into the edge like that. I'm not gonna use a blade because the fear is when you use a blade, even though you've got a new, brand new sharp blade, you can drag it across the um, lining paper and it snarls up and snags. So with it being lining paper, just mark it with your pencil and cut it with your shears. So that's what I'm gonna do now. HB pencil. Pull it away from the surface and cut neatly with your shears. And we're using shears and they're not scissors, like I hear a lot of people calling them. They're not scissors, they are shears. Hairdressers use scissors.
neatly cut like that. The paper's not going anywhere. So get your spatula squeegee, push it back in. Hanging brush, make sure there's no air bubbles. And now I need a sponge. Now I need a sponge, damp sponge. Ta-da, if by magic. And just wipe off any excess paste that's on the coving. Not that there's a lot. Damp sponge. And away we go. Quite happy with that. And I'm gonna do exactly the same cutting it the other side. So um, I'll see you later on when I get another length on. Right, on to the next length. I'm still gonna do another long one, which will join up that edge there all the way across to there. But as you can see, I've got a light fitting to go around. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you how to go around a light fitting when I come down to this bottom end here. So uh, bear with me. Sort you through going around this light. Star cuts as your key. Cut it, feed it through, and uh, away you go.
So that's it. Now, I'm not going to bore you going through the whole ceiling in the same process, but I will show you when it's all completed. Um, I'm going to get the shorter lengths on now and go back towards the window. These down lighters, you saw me do the star cut so then I could feed the light through it and then just trim to the edge of the actual fitting, you know, this hole in the ceiling. Now all I'm going to do now, because I'm going to come off camera, go down to the bottom end, cut that last, see down there, cut that last piece of overlap and just wipe the butt joint, and I'm going to say the word butt joint on the ceiling wipe it with a sponge just in case there's any paste that's crept um, out as I've gone along with the hanging brush. But other than that, it's straightforward. A ceiling is the easiest part of a room to actually paper other than it's been a bit awkward because you've only got straight cuts. You've got nothing really to go around. You might have an internal or an external cut, but generally a ceiling's flat and you only go around a light fitting. Dead easy, anybody can do it. That's why I'm showing you. So um, see you later on when I've done a lot more and then we'll um, recap on how it's all gone. So see you later alligator. So we're cracking on. We've done those lengths there. Well, see if get me. Done those lengths all the way to the middle of the room. I've come towards the window there. I've just got a, a strip that's probably, I don't know, 10 inches wide. Strip to put on 10 inches wide which I will get, I will rob off the strip that I'll more than likely have on my last length piece down there. So um, yeah, I'm just waiting for one of my concertina folded rolls to um, soak. It's eight to 10 minutes and um, crack on with that. So nearly done. Been just over about an hour and a quarter so far. Doing well. So here we are, we've just got two strips to do. Little filling piece there, and we've got the same, you can't see it with the sun, yeah you can now. There's a filling piece there. As I said just previously, about 10 inches on that. And what are we on this one? Eight. And um, my dad's just measuring off the piece there, that's eight inches. That's to allow me to have a bit of, bit of an overlap and we can trim it back. So this is how you actually trim it on a board, as you've seen previously on a video. If you use the edges of the paste table as your straight edge, you mark it down, and I've shown you on videos before if you've watched. If I just get eight inches there, you offer it up like that and go all the way down and then cut to that line. But as I say, that's been on previous videos, you probably know that. This is what I have a bit of a knock about when people are using those picnic tables or cheap DIY tables. Unless you've got a sharp, nice, neat edge on your paste table, how do you mark off your lengths of paper when you need to trim them down? Give us some comments. And particularly if you've got those paste tables with really rounded corners. Amateurish, aren't they? Amateurish. So when we've just cut that down, we've done an end to end fold. So we're only cutting through two layers of paper and not loads. But when you do that, make sure you know which is your good edge and which is your bad edge, i.e. your bad edge is your cut edge. The good edge needs to be going up against the good edge of the paper there, which I'm going to do. So I'm going to start this end and work my way down to there because that's where my good edge is, this side. I've got a left hand good edge. Fine, see you later when I've finished. There we have it everybody, we've um, papered the ceiling. I didn't want to do filming of all of it because it's very repetitive because you're just going up and down doing the same thing. But the key to this is making sure you get butt joints. And when you do your butt joints, make sure you wipe over them with a damp, warm sponge because this paper is gonna be painted over and the last thing you want to do is actually ooze any paste out through the joints onto the surface and if you don't wipe it off, what's that going to do? It's going to dry on the surface, then you've got to paint over it, then that's where you get flaking paint coming off the ceiling. But if you're actually going to be papering the ceiling, that won't matter. You, you can be a little bit more not so careful. I'll use the word not so careful because the paste on the surface doesn't make any difference because you'd be going back over it with uh, another layer of paper and paste anyway. But yes, this ceiling's been done. I started against that. Oh, bring you up 
against that good coving edge all the way along for the longest length which was 15 foot 9 we worked all the way back to a shorter piece up there that was about oh, what were we no, just about 11 foot we're about 11 foot the off cut of the last piece because there were two good edges off cut of the last piece then did me this last length that was just just against the window now as I said earlier on if you were doing this as a, a proper paper ceiling with a pattern you would start from the window which is there the main light source and work all your way back and that's because of your joints you want your joints to be not casting shadows from the light the main light source coming from the window so um, I think really I've shown you how to do this ceiling quite simply with using thousand lining paper this is quad rolls we don't faff about with single rolls we use quad rolls and a thousand lining is really nice it's quite thick and it's actually once you get it soaking in with um, tub paste you'll get it on all right eight to ten minutes soaking time to make it pliable enough to actually get on any less than that you'll probably find it stretches actually on the ceiling and you'll get your butt joints start springing but we've got it eight to ten minutes We've made sure we've gone over any joints with a sponge and also made sure it was down with a seam roller. So you can't go wrong, can't go wrong. And as I say, doing a ceiling is probably the one, one of the easiest papering jobs you can possibly do other than it's being a bit awkward to get to it because all you've got is flat, straight surfaces. You've only got a few lights to go around if you've got down lighters or a main ceiling light in the middle. But other than that, straightforward. Right, on that note, is there some videos at the side you can um, watch like subscribe if you like the content and um, thank you very much for watching